Hello YouTube, it's Das Gregor, and welcome to a long over to Gen 2 tutorial. Today we are looking at installing KDE on a fresh Gen 2 install. Uh, this is based upon minimal CD that was downloaded on the 30th of August and everything built on the 30th of August 2014. I state that because if you are doing this at a later date you'll probably be using a different version of the minimal CD and there may be a few differences in the way you had to set up your Gen 2. At this point in time I have done all of this inside of a virtual box and used the Gen kernel. We have a 3.14 uh, version of the kernel that it is installed with. I allowed the gen kernel to go ahead and set up and configure everything so it's just a default setup, bare bones, no frills at this point in time. Nothing else installed. I have created a user account as you can see. I have verified with if config that we have network connectivity and nothing else has occurred. What we will be looking at first in regards to this is I will be talking about the make.conf, I will be talking about our profile, and then we will be getting into what we need to do to get started with installing KDE. So now that we're in here, what I want to do first, of course, is become our super user. So I don't have to worry about access rights etc and I don't have sudo set up just yet so we will do this uh, first thing we're going to do here is we are going to look at etc portage make dot conf and I will discuss this file first the first couple lines are just default as you will have configured those or set them up while creating your Gen 2 machine. The make ops will be specific to yourself. That is normally the number of processors you have plus one. In my virtual box setup, I have, I have given it six processors, so it's a dash J7. The use flags are quite minimal. I only added ICU and Python. Bendist, MMX, SSE, and SSE2 are default. The reason I have ICU is I enjoy Chromium and if you want to install Chromium as your browser there are many packages that need to be built with the ICU flag. I have found it to be easier to install everything from the ground up with ICU instead of adding it at the package level. In fact, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head, but I don't, but there is only one package recently that I have had to install that was failing and I found out it was because it needed the negative or the minus ICU object which was being pulled in globally. I was able to do this at the package level for that one application and still have everything else working well. I also like to always have Python built into everything at the beginning because a lot of stuff within KDE that I use uses it and it's nice to have. The next line here, Emerge Defaults Ops. I add this because it allows me to quickly add use flags and global changes with my emerge command instead of having to run emerge a couple times and then having to type in the auto unmask to have those files written to. This is why I always use emerge-av as part of my structure in Gentoo. The dash a for ask the dash v for verbose. That will ask first if you want to write to the files using the auto unmask write before it actually does it. If you don't use the dash A, it may write all of that to the files with or without your permission. 
The next item is the accept license. Now, you're always going to accept a EULA, so I always add that, and I put the star because most likely if I'm installing this, I want to accept the license, whatever it is. The next two lines we will be looking at a little bit later because we will be editing the file again to add in video cards and input devices. But this will be specific to your own system. You need to know whether or not you have an Intel video card, a Nouveau slash NVIDIA card, an ATI card, etc. In the input devices, this is where keyboard, mouse, touchpad, EV dev would be added for those types of drivers or input drivers that you want to have built into your XORG. The last three lines here, you don't need to worry about them. They are from your Gen 2 install and are default. The next very important thing is making sure that your profile for Gen 2 is set correctly. You can look at this with the command eselect profile list. This will show you all of the profiles that are available for Gen 2. Now by default, if you did not change this within your Gen 2 install, you will be pointed to default Linux AMD 64 13.0. Now this is very important because these are going to set up all of your use flags for KDE or GNOME or XFCE. Well, they don't have an XFCE listed here, but you'd want at least to have 13.0 slash desktop if you were going to use something other than GNOME or KDE. In our situation, I am not going to use systemd. I will use the default OpenRC, which I prefer, with KDE. So I have set my profile to be default Linux AMD 64 13.0 desktop KDE. That is very important because it's going to set everything up on the back end for you and will will it will help you with many issues going forward. Once you set that up, you do that with an eselect profile set six in my case make sure that when you're doing this that you look at each of those numbers and find the right number because when you do this it may be in a different spot because profiles are being added and changed on a not really a regular basis but as things get updated I mean by the time you look at this video we might be at AMD 64 14.0 instead of 13.0 and the numbers might have changed but you want to make sure you're using desktop slash KDE now, it's already set in my case, so I'm not sure if it's going to do anything, but there you go. After you've done this, the safest thing to do is just reboot the system so that the profile and everything is set correctly. Otherwise, you'll need to run a few commands to, to allow the profile to work correctly. But rebooting is probably the easiest thing to do at this point to get you back into that right setting. Now before you go any further, now that we've made those changes to the make.conf and made the changes to the profile, we need to update the system. Now updating the system at this point is going to be a huge overhaul because now that all these flags are set and things are set up for KDE, when we do the update of the system, it is going to look at everything that it needs to set up behind the scenes to create a KDE environment. So what we want to do is emerge dash A for ask, V for verbose, U for update, N for new use, and that's a capital N, and a capital D for deep because we want it to look deep into the world and make sure everything looks proper. Now it may take a little bit of time while it goes through and searches out all the dependencies and you may have at this point in time anywhere from a hundred to almost probably 300 packages depending on how old your snapshot was 
that it may need to update. So we wait and we let the dependencies check out and while we do that we will be discussing some of the other items that we will be going over in this setup. Before we even get to KDE we need to make sure that there are some services that are installed and properly running that KDE will be needing to use. One is the DBUS service. The other is the poll kit for policy objects, UDEV, and UDISCs, which is used for the support of certain storage related services. Now we've gone through, it has now calculated the dependencies. We will see that there is a long list popping up here. We have 286 packages over a gig of source code that needs to get installed. So I'm going to go ahead and say yes to get these things going. It's going to start downloading and installing and it's going to take a few hours if not longer to complete this step. We'll make sure that it starts going here and once it does I am going to pause the video allow for all of these to complete. If you are lucky at this point in time you will have no errors and everything of course goes through properly. If you run into a problem where a package fails I find that it's easiest to try to emerge just that package by itself so that you can get a chance to look at the error. A lot of times you will find that for instance how it says checking for this this and this you will find that it failed because there was a dependency that it missed getting installed first and you can find what that is through there install that dependency and then get that package going and then start the long list all over again. If not you may need to look at the most recent error that popped up and see if you can google that error and figure out why that happened. A lot of times you will find a wiki or an error report somewhere where somebody else has run into that problem and there is either a fix or they may tell you oh that specific version of the application can't be used at this time downgrade it by masking that version and using the next older application to install and go forward. A lot of that stuff is going to be completely unique to your situation and you may need to do that research on your own. It's a difficult thing for me to even consider looking at what you might have run into. But at this point in time we've got a lot of packages for this to go through. We're going to let this go and I will come back when it's completed and we will move on to our first step going towards KDE which is installing the DBUS message system. And we are back. This may be a few seconds for you but as you can see on the screen here that took about 518 minutes or a little over eight and a half hours to go ahead and compile all of the code needed for the update of the world. Now that we've done that we can go ahead and move on to the services that need to be installed. The first thing we'll be looking at is the DBUS system to get into that you'll see on the documentation that I talked about in the KDE wiki there is a link to that and if we start to look in the instructions it reminds us that we need to do a world update which we have now done and if we come into here into our window and we do an emerge dash s dbus we should see that in that deep world update it should already be installed. So we see that it is there, sysapps dbus. 
So what we need to do is start that service at this time. So we do etc init dot d slash dbus start. We also need to add this to our rc update command with add dbus default that adds it to the run level and sets it up and I do believe that's all we need to worry about for dbus so we will go back to our original instructions and then if we look the next thing is pull kit so I'll click on that. Now you don't see that I have it off screen. You can follow along later. Polkit does discuss um, what it does on the wiki for it. It also reminds you to make sure you did a full deep world setup. It also talks about all the different rules that you can create and set up. And for now, I don't think I'm going to go too far into that. You can look at it if you like. If we also look here and do an emerge-s, you should see that it did install whole kit during that deep world update. Whole kit QT is there. For instance, the whole kit KD agent etc. The next thing we look at, UDEV of course was already set up, but we'll click on the link. We'll take a quick look to see if there's anything that actually needs to be done. And I don't believe we need to do anything with that. Although it does state here to start UDEV at boot time, we need to add it to our run level. So we type in RC, oh, get me back into there, RC dash update add udev. And we need to put this at the sys init level. And it already is, so we don't have to worry about that. If it wasn't, then it would be set up. The last service that it talks about is the U disks, and I did see it install that while I was watching some of this go through. I take a quick look at it just to make sure there's nothing extra we need to do. There are some Python scriptings that you can look at, but at this time I do believe that all got installed, and that is why it is so important to make sure that you set your profile proper because almost all of those services were set up correctly already we just really needed to update the dbus and add it to the run level as well as the udev checking to make sure it's okay the next big thing is looking at x server making sure that the x server setup is followed and there is a link to that as well in this and I'm going to click on it on my side so I can take a look at it and discuss as I look at that this is where we're going to go back in and set up those XOR drivers where we need to set up in the make file those few items so what we need to do is figure out what needs to go in the video cards and the devices for this and what we're going to do is a simple check using the xorg drivers meta package so to do that what we do is we do an emerge dash av and that's for ask and verbose and then we say xorg dash drivers what this is going to do is it's going to pull it up 
And because we set the verbose option, it's going to list all the items that we could actually put into those two settings. Now you'll see that everything is minus right now because we haven't set anything. But you'll see here at the beginning of XOR drivers, you'll see input devices, and it gives you a list of them, and it gives you video cards. Now in our case, we want to make sure that EV dev, keyboard, mouse are added to the input devices. The other thing that's important is that you know what type of video card you're using. In my case, we're using VirtualBox. So we want to add VirtualBox to the video cards. So what we'll do next is we'll say no to this. And we will edit our make file. And remember, we're going to need to worry about putting keyboard, mouse, EV dev, and then a virtual box. So we come down here, and the video drivers, of course, virtual box. EV dev keyboard mouse save this file take another look at what XORG drivers will now do and we should see that those options are now set to be enabled and there should be some more files that will be added to that package. See there's a lot more now being offered with XORG drivers and you'll see now in red for XORG drivers where it says EV dev keyboard mouse video cards virtual box. We'll take another quick look to make sure there isn't anything else we need to pay attention to. Now I do have a touchpad so we could put the synaptics into there so I may go ahead and do that and then I'm going to take another quick look at the video cards to make sure there isn't anything else for VirtualBox that we need to worry about and it doesn't look like it so it just looks like Synaptics so we will edit that make file one more time and we will add Synaptics save that of course and we will go ahead and install our XORG drivers allow it to calculate There we go, 26 packages it needs to do, we'll tell it yes. And we will let that go. And actually before we do that, I like to use the time command. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take that and we're going to tell it time. And what time does is it tells us how long it takes. Since we know for certain that's what we're going to do, we're going to take out the ask so it just goes ahead, calculates and runs. Now at the end of all this compiling, like you saw when we finished the other one, it said 518 minutes to do all that work, it will now tell us how long it took to install those 26 packages. This gives you somewhat of an idea. As a reminder to you, I am using six of my eight cores in this virtual box, and I gave it five gigs of memory to use. Now while it goes ahead and installs this and starts this, I'm going to go ahead and stop the simple screen recorder so that you don't have to be bored by this and we will speed it along so you should hear back from me and what should be seconds for you and I don't know how many minutes for me.
Okay, in 30, about 32 minutes actually, we got those drivers set up. And that takes us to the next step. Now the next step, we have an optional spot. We can either just do the Xorg server, or we can do Xorg-11 meta package, which will install the full Xorg release with additional fonts and utilities. Now, if you're low on space, you can do just the Xorg server, but I prefer that it's always best to take the whole thing to make sure you're not missing anything, especially when it comes to Gen 2. So what we're going to do next here is emerge-av xorg-x11 and see what that entails. And so far, I haven't had any errors with any of the packages installing. So I haven't stopped re the compiling to show you any type of any problems that I've run into. So far, everything has gone very well. So as you can see, there are 72 packages. And it looks like if we take a look at these, almost all of them seem to be font packages with a few programs up above, all very small, which should not take too long. Right now though, I'm going to say no, because I'm going to skip a quick step, because what we're going to do here, at the end of the instructions, once we've got all of this installed, we need to give the user access to the video. So we're going to do that real quick, and then we're going to finish up the compilations and I'm going to stop the video at this point and call it part one and then after Xorg is finished and what I will do is I'm gonna stop it because I've been working on this now for about oh altogether installing Gen 2 and getting this done it's been oh close to 14 hours and that's a long time I need to give up for the night and uh, get some sleep and start again so what we need to do here is, according to this, use gpass, oh, I need to access the page here, um, make sure everything is still good to go, yes, and we type g password, p-a-s-s-w-d, dash a, the name of our user, in my case, Das Gregor, and we want to add ourselves to the video group. That will give us access later on when we start Xorg. And the last thing, of course, as I said for this video, is we're going to finish installing these last 75 packages. So we'll let that recalculate the dependencies. It won't take too much time here. I'm going to tell it yes. You can always hit Y for yes or just type out yes. And we're going to go ahead and let this go on through. As I said, if I run into any issues, I'll stop and show you what I end up having to do to fix it. Otherwise, we will go on with part two. We are now currently just about 29 minutes into this first part of the tutorial of KDE for Gen 2, and I will stop the video here. I hope so far you're following along and everything is going as smoothly for you on your side, and that while it may be only 29 minutes for you to view, as I said so far, this whole entire process from start to finish has taken me nearly 14 hours just to get to this point. But I do believe if all things go well, part two should be the finalization of KDE, setting up the f last parts of Xorg, and rebooting and then getting into our system. So join me for part two, and you will see the rest. And as I said, if I do run into any problems with these last 72 packages, I will record what we need to do to fix it and move forward from there but so far everything looks smooth and we're already on 
to almost part four of 72. Thank you for watching. Have a good day, guys. Bye.